We've been at war for over 10 years now, and the struggles have not decreased. They've increased. Just because we don't have a lot of troops overseas, or as many as we used to, doesn't mean that we don't have a lot of problems here at home. Kids might not recognize their dad anymore. The guy who was home just six months ago, the guy who's home now may be a completely different guy. It's been a tough time for everyone, and it's our job as a community to step in and take care of those who have come home. We were introduced to the Armed Forces Foundation almost two years ago, and our synergy was immediately obvious because we both want to help those who serve our country. The current conflicts have unfortunately produced a large number of people with multiple extremity amputations. Our goal is to make the treatment option of hand or face transplantation more widely available. When Dr. Lee came to Johns Hopkins, he hit the ground running. Not only was he running his program, but he decided that as a partner with the AFF, he really wanted to help us out in another way. And he introduced us into their psychiatry department. And they have one of the best programs out there for PTSD and TBI. And now recently, we are co-developing a program with our school counselor to help train teachers and principals and other counselors on how to deal with children of PTSD victims. Every day we're learning more about post-traumatic stress disorder. We call it the invisible wounds because you really don't see it. But with uh, the new position, we'll be able to bring our home and school together as a community. So this year we've had a lot of amazing things happen, but there are some memories that really stand out. And one of them was meeting Stephen Jackal. My name is Sergeant Stephen Wayne Jackal Jr. I'm in the United States Army. And my military specialty occupation would be a combat engineer. The Armed Forces Foundation, wonderful organization. I found out about them through an email from my platoon sergeant about who wanted to go to the Texas Motor Speedway. Getting the opportunity to stay in a, in a Kurt Busch's suite, meeting Patricia. You know, I meet Josh and I meet Zach and, you know, these guys are phenomenal. But one of the neatest moments that evening was when Rusty said, I really want Stephen to see this race, but he can't see it from where he is in his wheelchair. I'm more than willing to carry him up on the top of my motorhome so he can actually see the whole track. And he said, fine, as long as you don't think I'll fall. So it was really neat to see Stephen wrap his arms around Rusty's neck and, and climb this big Cajun guy, climb up to the top of his motorhome so he could watch the race. And he brought his wheelchair up there and he enjoyed the rest of the evening, like everyone else. And that's what we have to do here in America. We have to step up and let Stephen jump on our backs and, and be there to hold him, walking up those stairs and, and let him enjoy everything that we do. The aura of of care that they have for wounded warriors is amazing. I mean, that's the best word that I can use, honestly. I, mean, I got a special place in my heart for Armed Forces Foundation. There's really nothing like watching the troops actually come home. I was um, at Hartsfield in Atlanta and waiting, you know, hadn't really slept well and you know, moaning about, you know, the long line at some rental car company. And then all of a sudden from the escalator, you start seeing the digicamo. Men and women and white, black, Latin, Asian, all coming up. And it was really remarkable because here we were, all beleaguered kind of PO travelers, and everyone just starts applauding. And it was not televised. It wasn't arranged. It was everybody in the most basic and honest way they could saying thank you. I was getting on an elevator once at Bethesda, having one of those food bar kind of days. The elevator doors open up. A Marine rolls on in his wheelchair, in his uniform. He's got his sergeant stripes on, missing his legs. I said, Sergeant, how you doing? He said, I'm having an awesome day. How you doing, sir? And what an incredible message that is. I can't have a bad day after that. Here's a guy who's given his legs for his country and I'm, it's still feeling positive. I'm sure he's got times when he's not, but still to have that attitude, that's great. My call to action would be, whenever you see a member of our military, please thank them for what they've done for us, for what they are doing to protect our country and for the sacrifices that they're making for all of us. Support our military families because it's really difficult when you think about having your spouse 
uh, deployed for months at a time, sometimes over a year. Oh, I know what that's like when my husband deployed. And also just thinking about the things that they need on a day-to-day -day basis. Please support them and let them know that you're there for them. Let's face it, government isn't there to do everything for everybody. We need citizens coming forward. We need citizens to do things to say to uh, veterans, what do you need? Is everything okay? What the Armed Forces Foundation is out there to do, and, and groups like that, to say, we want you to be able to stand on your own two feet again. What do you need to help you do that? That's what's so important about organizations like this.